Hello and welcome. Today we have an exciting review of the uh, Q696 Dragonfly quadcopter slash drone. Uh, this particular version or model has the FPV uh, 5 point gigahertz screen. It has the two axis 1080p gimbal camera and these fantastic night lights. Um, it is a very um, exciting and interesting quadcopter, which I think many of you will find interesting. It is new, just came out not too long ago, and it is fantastic for the exception of one little detail. Uh, this is a great quadcopter, and you're going to get remarkable footage from this for being a toy grade quadcopter. Perhaps, maybe even the best footage you can ever get from a toy grade quadcopter. So let's get into the details of this drone right now. Okay, so we're not going to do a pure unboxing here because we already preset all the um, uh, all the parts and uh, installed and connected and screwed in all the drone parts. But uh, this is essentially the box. You know, it's from WL to Toys. Well, WL Tech. I think it's a subdivision of WL Toys. Um, so here's the box, and essentially. Um, it comes like this. I mean, the quadcopter is obviously a little more um, embedded in this section of the box, and we just installed the propellers. Uh, we installed the uh, the uh, camera and gimbal, and then on this side you would have the the controller and the FPV screen. And that is another thing that requires installation and uh, you know screwing in this little mount for the FPV screen and then underneath this portion of the box uh, you have your extra propellers with a um, charge cable for the FPV screen and then you get your charger now the charger is uh, the charger is European uh, the place where I ordered it from um, came with this little adapter uh, but so yeah, just make sure that when you get this you have the adapter as well uh, if, if not you can buy one of these adapters pretty cheap online or at this You know probably at a Walmart or Target or something underneath this portion of the box you will find the um, instruction manuals and uh, miscellaneous paperwork and you will find these little uh, propeller guards that you would simply um, put in on each end like this and they snap in so um, you have these propeller guards as well I usually don't tend to use them but uh, so that's essentially it. the camera and gimbal they're basically one piece and you just snap it on there and you have to you do have to plug it in there's a little plug in there and you have to make sure you plug it in correctly uh, I believe the plug has five six pins in the port but yet the plug is five pins so you have to move it more towards the right uh, but you'll figure it out once you see the camera light up if you plug it in and you don't see the camera light up then you know you have to you have to shift the uh, little plug in there and then last but not least it comes with a 4d card right here that you just put in that camera and that's about it and um that's this version, like I said. There are other, there are other versions that I think there's a Wi-Fi version. Uh, if you look at the transmitter, uh, any version of this, you'll notice that the transmitter can pop up a little cell phone holder. And uh, I think there's also a plain version of this that has no camera. And then there's a version of this that just has a plain transmitter uh, with the camera and there's no FPV. So there's like about maybe four different versions of this. But I recommend, I think the best version is the uh, four, 5 point gigahertz FPV version. Uh, you don't need to supply your own cell phone and you get a crystal clear, uh, you know, low lag uh, reception. And it does tend to be more expensive uh, than the other versions, but uh, it is pretty cool. So now let's talk a little bit about um, the quadcopter and the transmitter. This quadcopter has a pretty large proprietary battery. 
It is a 7.4 volt, 2600 milliamp LiPo battery. Um, so it takes a little while to charge. Not too bad, but not too fast. It's not a smart battery. It doesn't tell you the voltage or anything. I mean, you will get a low voltage warning on the transmitter and you will see the quadcopter light up once it goes a little low. But, um, but it's not one of those that has a, a bar that shows how much uh, remaining charge is left. But uh, it is uh, pretty good. Now I've already, uh, off camera, I've already taken this out for a few flights and, um, and we're gonna take, take this up for a flight now. Uh, so you see it in action, but I have to say this thing is awesome. It's very stable and easy and smooth to fly. Uh, the, the gimbal and the camera work magnificent. Now I had a little mishap where um, I, I think I, when I was unpacking everything, I uh, dropped the camera and I cracked it on the edge. So you'll see a little um, anomaly there on the screen, but that's not the fault of the quadcopter, that's user error. But in general, the quality of the footage and the way this gimbal works is fantastic. I mean, you can adjust, you can adjust it from the controller. See these two buttons, you can tilt it downwards. See, you can tilt it upwards. Um, so this is down, this is up. Uh, you've got your auto takeoff here. You've got um, this button up here for low and high rates, which you can see here when you click it. High rate, low rate. You can get um, miscellaneous um, telemetry coming from, from the quadcopter as it's in the air. You can see the transmitter's uh, voltage and power. You can see the power on the quadcopter. Uh, you can actually see the distance away from you. I'm not sure how accurate that is because this is not a GPS quadcopter, nor is it a brushless quadcopter. This is a brushed toy grade quadcopter, but I'm telling you, it is fantastic. Um, this shows you the time it's been up in the air. Uh, it's like a countdown timer. Uh, so it increments and shows you how long you've been in the air. Uh, you've got your trims here on and off switch. Now this is supposed to be a flip button and I believe it'll flip if you don't have the gimbal camera attached. If you do have it attached, it will not, it's ineffective and it will not do a flip. And um, I believe this one's probably, uh, there's a one key return. I'm not sure, I forgot if it was this one or this one. Also one of them turns off the lights. Uh, and then you've got, you know, your uh, throttle and rudder controls. And then your, you know, your FPV display, your antenna. Uh, but this thing flies very smooth, very well. The camera and gimbal are top notch. Uh, the quality of the 1080p camera is great. The gimbal really does stabilize really well. It's not a um, brushless gimbal. It's what's called a uh, coreless, coreless motor or servo gimbal. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, it does an excellent job keeping the thing steady. As you can see here, I'm tilting it. See, tilting it forward and backwards and then tilting it side to side. Uh, it's only a two-axis gimbal, but it does its job very well. And the FPV range is pretty good on this. I mean, it goes as far as the control distance, and it doesn't even, um, you know, fidget or it doesn't even uh, become unclear. It stays clear the whole way through. And on a full charge, the FPV screen lasts quite a while, and with the fresh batteries, the Transmitter also lasts for a while. So this is a smooth, stable, toy-grade flyer. Uh, my only, the only complaint I really have about this, oh, and then the lights are great as well, as you can see. That's an excellent night flyer. You will get everyone's attention if you're flying this out at night. Uh, but the only complaint I really have is the range. Uh, they advertise the range as 100 meters. And, um, if anything, it's just that amount. Uh, if you fly this you know, in front of your house or something, don't take it too far because you will lose range on it 
and it will gracefully come down. It does an auto land once it loses connection with the transmitter. Uh, but yeah, the range is not as good as I've seen some of the newer toy grade quadcopters. I, I reviewed the X300 from XK and that one goes uh, somewhere between 120 to 200 meters. And there's some other toy grade ones that go up, up to 300 meters. And I would have liked to have seen this one go a little further out and, and above, but it, it doesn't. So if you fly this one, it's an excellent flying experience as long as you're within range. So don't, don't get too aggressive with this and try to fly it too far out because it will auto land and, um, and that's it. So that's the only true complaint. But aside from that, this thing is fantastic. Smooth flyer, excellent footage for being a toy great quadcopter. Uh, the price is pretty competitive. Um, so yes, this is, this is really neat. And it's, you know, it's cool looking, it's big. Now I haven't reviewed the um, Dragonfly 2, which is a very similar version to this. It's all black, instead of white, it's all black. And it doesn't have a, um, a 1080p gimbal camera. It has a 720p camera that you can tilt, but it's not a real-time stabilization camera. And uh, it's very similar to this, but you can tell that this one has been upgraded quite a bit. The uh, Dragonfly 2 didn't have lights on the legs and it didn't have these little uh, rubber stoppers on the bottom of the legs. These are really cool. And um, that one was a Q393, I believe. So let's take this out for a little flight and we'll show you onboard footage and some footage of it flying and that's it. So let's take it up for a spin. Recorded. I'm gonna go a little fast. Let's move to the front of the camera. 